I'm Sharon Carroll. It's good to be back with you today. This is the final week for us to be together for these miracle lessons in Sunday school. I hope you've enjoyed um, having these as much as I've enjoyed being with you and doing them. And I hope you remember the truths that we learned and um, that it encourages you in your faith. So today, we'll be talking about our last miracle. But before we do that, let's go back like we always do and talk about our expectations. What do we expect? First of all, that we would be respectful, considerate, kind to one another, that we would be attentive, that we would pay attention, that we would use our good manners. We said having good manners is, and using them is always appropriate and that we would be cooperative, that we would be helpful, and that we would all join and work together for a common goal. So what is that goal? Well, the goal for us is that because of what we do here today, that we would know God better, that we would love him with all of our hearts, and that we would serve him. So let's do nothing to prevent anyone from hearing what the Lord says to their heart today. So no poking your brother. And why, why do we expect this? It's because when we do those things, we say that we value each other, that they are important to us, that we treasure them, and we consider them more important than our own selves. So it's time for the question, do you have your Bible today? I know you do. So why is that so important? Why do we say, have your Bible, read it, cherish it, hide it in your heart, treasure it? Well, we've talked every week about some reasons and I bet you know them all by this time. But let's just go back over them really quickly. Okay, first one is, this is God's word. God wrote it. Second Timothy says that all scripture is breathed out by God. And second Peter says, it didn't come by the will of man. It was produced not for man, but when men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. God, through his Holy Spirit, told them what to write, and they wrote it. So, because it's all God-breathed, we can absolutely trust that every single word is true. Psalm, in the Psalm 119, we're told the sum of your word is truth. That means all of it, every single word. And in Proverbs, we're told every word of God proves true. So because God wrote it, and because every single word is true, that gives us a firm foundation to build our lives on. In Matthew, Jesus told us anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on a solid rock. And then the last reason that we talked about is that it is eternal. Things, everything is temporary. Things come, things go. But God's word isn't temporary. It is eternal. It will last forever. In Isaiah, we, said, we are told, the grass withers, and the flower fades, but the word of our God, it will last forever. And Jesus told us in Luke that heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not, by no means pass away. So again, I want to tell you, boys and girls, that today, as we study in our Bibles, we are hearing in our ears the very word of God to us. His thoughts, 
his commands, his story. To be in his word is to be in his presence and to be spending time with him. Yep, it's a treasure book. And today we want to talk about hiding part of that word in our hearts. So remember, it's the verse that we've had every week, and I know that many of you are probably able to say it now. So we're going to go to Psalms, which is almost in the middle of your Bible. And remember we said the first number is the chapter, which just helps us find it. So we're going to go to Psalm 40, and the second number is the verse. Old Testament Psalms, right? Yes. So Psalms 40, verse 5 says, You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. Remember, we talked about that. We can't even begin to number how many times in a day God thinks about us. We are on his mind. And we're going to talk about some wondrous things that Jesus did. And he was human, but he is God. We're going to talk about some wondrous things that he did then. And we're going to talk about the wondrous things that he does for us today. None can compare with him. So, before we talk about this week's miracle, let's ask the big question. We've asked it every week, and you remember it. Why did Jesus perform miracles? Tell me what a miracle is. You're right. Something only God can do. Something impossible, but not for God. And Jesus performed so many miracles. Remember, John said, there are so many miracles, so many things that Jesus did, that if we could write them down, and we can't, or if he could write them down, there, there would be so much that even all the books in the world couldn't contain it. So, first reason Jesus did miracles was to glorify God. And we said that's honor or praise. Jesus honored the Father by doing the miracles. And he reflected God because he was the very image of God. He wanted to show people that he was indeed the Son of God, that he is the Son of God, exactly who he says he is. And then... He wanted to tell people how very much and show them how very much he cares and loves for them. So we talked about three miracles already. First one was Jesus calmed the storm. And we said that we can trust him in our storms. He is trustworthy. Second one, he fed 5,000 men and women and children with just a little bit of bread and fish. He is the bread of life, and only Jesus can satisfy our souls, and only Jesus can meet our deepest needs. And then we talked about another storm, and Jesus came to the disciples when they were in trouble. You're right, walking on water. That was a miracle. And we said that we all want to have walking on water days in our hearts, but sometimes we're like Peter and we look at what's going on around us and we start to sink. But the good news of that is that Jesus came to grab us up and save us and hold us tight. And we can trust him with our fears and our needs. We can trust him with our very lives. So today, we're going to talk about Certainly not the last miracle, but the last one for this month that I get to be with you. We're going to listen for a miracle at the top of a mountain. So you, have you got your listening ears on? Yeah, I can tell you do. Okay, so you listen 
for the miracle that happened at the very top of the mountain. One day, Jesus led three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, up on a high mountain to pray. The disciples fell fast asleep. As Jesus prayed, something amazing happened. Now, boys and girls, there's this big word that we call that. It's called transfiguration. That is a big word, isn't it? You want to try to say it with me? Transfiguration. Whew, that's a big word. So what does that mean? It just means that Jesus, his appearance changed suddenly. His face was shining like the sun, and his clothes were as white as the light. And then the disciples woke up, and guess who they saw? They saw Moses and Elijah and Jesus. They were all talking together. Moses, remember Moses? He, God called him to lead the people out of slavery. And Elijah was an Old Testament prophet. Peter said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you want, I will set up three tents. One for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. And then something else happened. While Peter was still speaking, a bright cloud suddenly covered them. A voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. The disciples heard this and fell face down. They were terrified. But Jesus came up and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When the disciples looked up, they did not see Moses or Elijah anymore. They only saw Jesus. And as they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus said to them, Don't tell anyone what you saw until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. Well, that was a miracle. A bright light and a voice from God saying, This is my Son. So that was a pretty exciting story. But as we always do, we want to talk, too, about um, that happened, happened then. What is Jesus saying to our hearts today about that story? Well, the very first thing is that Jesus told them that he would die and be buried and rise again. And that that, because of that, we can be saved. Jesus came to do for us what we cannot do for, her, for ourselves. He came to save us. And when we turn to him with faith and trust and repentance in our hearts, he will save us, give us a new heart and a new life. And we can be with him forever. Jesus is the Son of God, and he is our Savior. And also... G Jesus showed them something wonderful on the top of the mountain. His glory. He shone brighter than anything we can imagine. Showing God's presence. Guys, did you know that there are some places, one place in Alaska where the sun never sets for 80 days. Wow, that's a lot of brightness, isn't it? No nighttime for 80 days. But you know what? Compared to Jesus' brightness and his glory, that pales. So Jesus' appearance changed. 
Mark said that his clothing was whiter than any launderer could get it, no matter how many times it was washed. Jesus' clothing was whiter than that. And it says his face was shining like the sun. Jesus' glory is bright. But it's so much more than light. The disciples saw the light, but he wanted them to understand that they were in the presence of God. And his glory is so much more than light. His glory is so many wonderful things. It's his goodness. Everything God does is good and right. It's his love. Boundless, eternal, unending. Here's another big word, immutable, which means it never changes. God's love never ends. God so loved that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but will have eternal life. It's his holiness. Remember we talked this morning about how nothing, no one compares with him. He is higher than all, and yet he chooses to come down and relentlessly pursue us. He is the image of the invisible God. When we see Jesus, We see God. He is the king of kings. And we want to trust him to be the king and owner and master of our hearts. He is creator. And the Bible says sustainer. That means keeping it together, holding it together of all that exists. Our Jesus, he is our greatest treasure. They saw who Jesus is, and they heard God say, This is my son. Listen to him. And we are listening to him every time we're in his word, and we're prompted by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Peter said, Let's just stay up here and build tents. But they had to come down from the mountain back into life. And so the disciples saw the glory of Jesus, and because of Jesus, we get glimpses of that glory every day as we look at his wondrous creation and breathe his air, as he answers our prayer, and we experience his help and power for living. And guess what? One day, one day, Very soon, Jesus is coming back. He's coming back for us. And he'll be wearing bright clothing and shining brighter than the sun. He will destroy evil and he'll fix everything that's wrong. And he'll make all things new. That's good news, boys and girls. And those of us who have put our faith in Jesus, we're going to receive glorified bodies and we're going to live forever with him. And people from every tongue and tribe and nation will worship him. We'll all worship him together. Jesus is our living hope. And we can live every day facing life here because we know that he's coming back for us. Now, I have a flashlight here. Maybe you can see the bright light. If we turn the lights out, it would even be brighter, but we won't ask Mr. Scott to do that. So I have a flashlight here. And the flashlight has a source of power, which is a battery. But... This light can only shine as bright as it gets its power from the battery. And some days it gets real dim and some days it goes out and it has to be recharged. And then it's bright again. 
So I brought this flashlight today because I wanted to help you remember that God is our source of power. And every day, we need to recharge our batteries. And you may be saying, okay, Miss Sharon, how do we do that? Well, I'm going to tell you. We recharge our, bower, our batteries and get the power from God for living by spending time talking to him in prayer, by studying his word, by fellowshipping with other believers, which is kind of hard right now, isn't it? But we can only shine as bright as our inside heart, our battery is filled up with Jesus. And remember I said they came down from the mountain? It's because Jesus wanted them to go out into life and live their lives and shine his glory for others. And so I pray for you boys and girls that you'll be able to do the, that this week, that all of us, that will recharge our heart by being with him and in his word and that we'll be able to shine brightly into the lives of others. That shining brightly means that we glorify God, that we'll be able to do that in the lives of others, and they'll want to know the reason for the hope that we have. So I want us to spend some time in prayer, and as we've said every week, it is that you have a need in your heart. Maybe it's that you want to turn to Jesus and trust him to save you. Maybe it's you have a fear. Whatever it is, I can't hear it, and I don't know it, but God does. And we can be sure that when we're talking to him, he hears us. And do you know there's this wonderful verse that says, before they even speak, the answer's on the way. And so we can trust that he hears and he will answer and do what's the very best for us. So will you pray with me? Dear Lord, thank you so much for the time that we've had to be in your word, to be together, not in the same room, but to be together. Dear Lord, thank you for your word that is life to us, that is so true, that teaches us about the wonderful miracles that Jesus did and helps us understand that he still works miracles in our heart, that he's the only one that can save us, that, Jesus, you give us a new heart and a new life, that we can trust you with our lives, that we can trust you in our storms, we can trust you with our fears. Thank you for speaking that to our hearts today. And Lord, as I always do, I pray for these boys and girls that they would answer your call quickly to their hearts, that they would love your word, that they would understand that Jesus and his word is the firm foundation for their lives, that you would protect them. Lord, help us to all love you more this week. I pray for the parents and adults that as they come alongside these kids and teach them that, God, you'd give them great wisdom, that you'd give them a love for your word, that you'd give them a love for and a real sense of what will last and what doesn't matter. Thank you again for the amazing way you love us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Boys and girls, it's been good to get, be with you, and thank you for letting me be a part of this month with you. Have a wonderful week.